I just want to be the first to welcome you to the first session with Sarah of 2022. This has been such a transformative series for so many. My name is Jenny Anchondo and I'm here merely as your moderator and host for the event. And so what I'll be doing is answering your questions in the chat, asking questions at the end, and most importantly, telling you about our speaker today. Now, our original speaker for personal reasons is not able to be here today, but we're working to get her at a later date at, you know, if possible. But what's really exciting about our speaker today is she's somebody who is familiar to many of you. Her name is Maria Santi, and she is just is a wealth of knowledge. So today's topic is one that is incredibly relevant, whether you are just starting out in business or whether you have been really established. We're talking about negotiation. So let me share a little bit about Maria. She's the director of minority outreach for the Grand Prairie Chamber of Commerce. So Grand Prairie is in Texas, but this is information that's going to be relevant to you regardless of where you live in the country. She just does a great job of making it feel more regional and more national. She does work with professionals, entrepreneurs with, with a true respect for diversity through workshops, programs, special events. So this is something that she has been doing for some time and is very well versed in. What her passion project is within her profession is building bridges between different business communities. So we're talking skills like negotiation, creating partnership, developing new strategies. Um, she is somebody who has earned uh, studied law in both the United States and Mexico. So she's somebody who not only brings the business acumen that we're looking for, but also the legal side as well. So she just is very talented at weaving all of this in. And I want to remind you that all of these sessions, as always, will be up for replay on YouTube on Sarah's channel. So don't worry if you don't catch every single thing. And without further ado, let's hand it over to Maria for some chat about negotiation. Maria, take it away. Thank you so much um, to all the team at Sir, uh, Sir Jobs International. It is a pleasure to be here and honor to open 2022 full of great business energy. And uh, well, I have no words to explain how many times uh, we have we start every year with a lot of business resolutions, but what happens with them? What is wrong with them that some of them they fail on the road or sometimes we forget about them? Well, this session today about negotiation and communication is one of them because sometimes we don't understand the importance of negotiating. Sometimes we don't communicate properly what we want from our clients or what we want our clients to know about us or, or about our products. So if you're staying here this, this hour, please, um, as, as Jenny said, ask anything, even if it's something not related to the subject, that's fine. Today is your opportunity. And there is no silly question. Well said, uh, Jenny. So we'll be very attentive on trying to um, answer all the questions that we can. And with that, let me start sharing my, my screen right now. Let me see. So this will be our agenda today. We're going to try to uh, go over it as fast as we can because there's a lot of information. And uh, we will talk about communication, what is the process, what is the effect on, on the emotions, our emotions, while we are trying to communicate. We will know about what is an effective communication, what is important about commercial communication, because we are in business, right? Also, in regards of negotiation, what are the types of negotiation? Why is so important to have ethics, to be ethic in a negotiation? Uh, what is bad now for the project? And also strategies that probably you are already implementing, but if not, you will learn about it. And how to obtain an effective business closure. That's our agenda. And with that, let me tell you quickly that communication, it is created on five steps. It requires five steps. The first one, it is to send 
to send something, to send what we want to communicate, what we want to be heard, what we want not just to say, but what we want to be heard. Re the receptor or the reception or of that message, it is an important part of it because it's not worth it. It's not uh, an effective communication if we are just talking and people are listening, but they are not exactly putting attention on what we are, we have to say. The person has to receive that message. The, the person has to act as, as a good receptor. The message has to have a context, has to have valuable content. Yes, we can talk about so many other things in life and, and you know, things that maybe are interesting for us, different topics, but whenever that you want to have an effective communication, you have to create a reaction. That reaction, it is the response of people of, uh, of whom you are communicating. This image, it is important. Why? Because you can see that there is a gentleman um, uh, putting on a tie. I wonder how many of you have tried to um, instruct somebody to put on a tie. How many different knots of tie do you know? How many parts of a tie do you know? Do you know that it has a, a small part, a longest part, a thin part? How do you express that? that there are so many different ways to instruct a person to put on a tie. So whenever that you want to, uh, as an exercise or a dynamic, to uh, try to see how good you are communicating, I, I, um, I'll say that this is a good opportunity for you if you with somebody else try to um, uh, play this game or try to do this uh, dynamic on communicating to the other person how to tie, uh, how to do th this, uh, this tie. So you will see how good you are communicating. Sender and receiver are the parts more important of a communication. The sender, mm, let's say, starts with the idea, with what he wants to say. It must have an order. We cannot start communicating without not even knowing how is the order of the things that we want to say. Also, be careful with the emotional effects. Why? Because sometimes if our emotions are leading the context or the order of, of what we want to say, that is not going to work. Everything has to be out of emotional effects. Sometimes if we are mad, if we are angry, if we are desperate, that will affect directly the, the ideas that we want to communicate. We have to be clear and more specifically, do not think the answers of the, re of the receiver. Do not think the answers of the other person. How many times we ask something or we say something and we are immediately thinking about what the other person is going to respond? Oh, she's going to say no. Oh, I guess she's busy. Oh, maybe he is not into this. Do not think about the answers. Why? Because that creates an effect on you on losing what you have started, which is the idea and the order of what you want to communicate. So avoid to do that. If you are the receiver or any receiver has to be available to listen, has to be in a good time to understand and to be able to not just to hear or listen, but to understand what the sender is trying to say. The environment, the environment must be neutral. You cannot communicate with a person in the middle of an accident. You cannot communicate with a person in the middle of a riot or something that it's avoiding you to, uh, to um, communicate or to say something that you need the other person to, um, to give you an answer, a, a clear response. Be careful with the body language. The other person, if you are talking to that person and then you see this, of course, on you is gonna create an effect of, of oh, she's not agreeing on what I'm saying, or, oh no, what did I say that maybe she got upset? 
your body language and the body language of the receiver, it is something very important. We need to start learning how to read body language. Another thing, please avoid cell phones, tablets, laptops, anything that has to do with somebody that is taking away the attention. Uh, if you are the receiver, please try to put away all those technological devices from you. Why? Because you don't, you are not listening. How many times you try to uh, address uh, uh, a communication with somebody that is looking at their phone, that it's on Instagram or something else? That person is not putting attention to you. You're losing your time. Your idea is not going to get straight to where you want. Even if you are clear, even if you have no emotional effect, that person is not listening. Another, another important thing as a receiver is as well, do not think the answers. Do not think, oh, if I respond this, she or he is going to um, respond back with this or that. Another important thing. Um, if you are kind of hesitating or, or, or if you are not 100% sure of what the other person tried to say, just you can say, okay, so what you mean is this. Okay, so what you meant is that. Oh, okay, so to clarify, this is what you are trying to tell me. Why? Because a lot of time, human beings, we assume things. We assume things so many so many times during the day and that is not correct yes we have to be prepared to provide a result which is the cycle the end of the cycle of the communication whenever that the sender has has sent has said that idea that message we we um listened to it we understood it and then what we do we give a result, we, we give a response. So that's the whole cycle of communication. What is not communicate? Communicate is not to step on the other, uh, on the other's um, ideas, right? It's not to know everything. Like, okay, if somebody comes and start uh, telling you about a project, Communicating is not completely not to say, okay, this is what you should do, A, B, C, D, E, or, oh, no, I have a better idea about that, A, B, C, D. No, you have to listen. You have to uh, pay attention to the other person and from that to start creating many, many circles of communication as you can. That's a conversation, right? We don't want the other person not to come and communicate with us because we don't let them explain, because we don't let them talk. Communicate is not about knowing everything. As I have said, emotions are a straight effect on communication whenever that we don't manage them. Let's avoid try to negotiate or to communicate if we are hungry, if we are stressed, if we are ill, or if we are depending on physiological needs. Avoid that because what it's going to do is that you might want to do everything quick, fast, as soon as possible. I need your answer. Don't yell at me. I'm hungry. I wish I could um, have done this and that before having this conversation. Your mindset is not on the place that has to be. Your mind is away from the place at this, at this point where it's important that it has to be. If you feel like you are losing the control of a communication or a negotiation, just ask for time. It's fine. Nothing happens. Can I have a second, please? Just give me a minute, please. It's okay. We need time to breathe, to love, and that helps a lot. To breathe helps a lot to our brain to refresh, and to start over the you are not going to start over from the beginning but to start over at the point that you left and that's very important another option another uh, point here 
is that whenever that you want to negotiate or communicate, you have to know the tone, the audience, and your target. Let's say I'm in court. I'm not going to come to the judge and say, hey, buddy, no, there is an audience. There is a tone. I got to be respectful. I, I have to know what I want from my communication. If I'm going to talk to parents, if I'm going to talk to my boss, if I'm going to uh, talk to my friends, if I'm going to talk to a client, how long I've been dealing with that client, that's very important. We need to know exactly the timeline of the communication and the negotiation that we are set. Why? Because if not, what is going to happen is that people are not going to trust us. People are going to uh, be discomforted with the way that we are treating them, and we don't want that. We don't want our emotions to cause a negative effect on our communication. Remember that trading or doing business or doing commercial transactions is not a sprint. It's not something that happens today, right now, in five minutes, in 30 seconds. No. A good negotiation is a marathon. You have to nurture it. You have to earn it. You have to work towards it. It's not something that it's like, okay, you have five minutes to negotiate. You have five minutes to communicate. We have to set up time and we have to learn skills in order to, um, to have good results. What is wrong with written communication through tech devices? Well, number one, you have to understand that there is a person on the other side reading your messages, reading your emails, looking at you through camera whenever that you are at Zoom, in a Zoom call or a um, um, meet call, whatever it is. Remember that we are dealing with people. Technology, yes. It's helping us, but it's not completely our secretary or our, our assistant or somebody that can cover us from what we don't want to, to, to say or for what we want to be understood. How many times if you send a message, the other person takes it wrong, the other person didn't read it on the same by on the same line as you did. That happens to emails as well. Let's be brief, let's be concise, but let's be polite. How many times during a Zoom call, we don't turn on the camera? Why? Because, okay, I understand, maybe we're driving, maybe we are um, doing something else, but most of the time, let's procure the interaction in between people, in between the screen and the, the presenter or whoever we have to see in that Zoom call. Let's, uh, um, let's start to having that culture that the communication through devices is also a valuable communication. An effective communication is that one that it's, that it's going to have congruence. It's empathy, progress, and business engagement. From these four points, there is no effective communication if you only want to have one. Why? Because if you don't have empathy for others, if you don't have empathy for what has been said from your other part, from the client that you are trying to sell, if you are not congruent on the things that you are saying, definitely they want it won't be a progressive or they, it won't be a progressive communication. You are gonna fall and nothing is going to happen. Furthermore, there's not gonna be a business engagement. How many times we go to networking events and what do we do? Okay, we stay at the corner, drinking, eating, we send out um, maybe um, business cards or we introduce ourselves with one, two people, that's it. But we don't create an effective communication. So what is the problem? Well. Maybe what I'm saying that I am is not congruent with the, the message that I'm sending. 
remember that it's very important also to take care of our body language. So if I want business engagement, I have to take care of an effective communication on all the things that I do. I have not seen a business transaction that has, has not been done with, through an effective communication. Commercial communication, this is something very broad, but we're gonna do it very brief. Uh, these are some of the items that we have to take care of. What is the offer? At what time we received that offer or we sent the offer? At what time we accepted it? When that person say, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not taking your offer. You know what? What if you take a little bit more of money? Would you take a thousand dollars more? Will you do this for that? What is the kind of communication that at the time has implied a contract? At what time did we um, express the contract? That's very important. If we do a presentation about this commercial communication, believe me, it's going to take us forever. It's a, it's a, a very, very broad subject. But whenever that you have the opportunity to read or to learn a little bit of more of these items, believe me, your commercial transactions are going to be better. Remember just one thing that the offers in magazines and negotiation between merchants, they are a very important part for small for all the businesses because they represent offers. They represent the specific way that that the negotiations and the sales are done between merchants, the contracts between merchants. How many times we believe that the emails do not represent anything because we didn't we, didn't, we don't have a contract wrong how many times we think oh don't worry we just talk about it there is nothing on writing excuse me there are contracts uh, there are so many things that create a contract that i i uh, recommend you whenever that you can to listen or to i'm sorry to read a little bit of more about this commercial communication is very important. Now let's talk about uh, negotiation. Negotiating is a two way communication with the purpose of reaching an agreement when both parties have an interest in the same objective. This is very important. How many times we think that we are great negotiators because we get to the point that the other party does whatever we want. That is not negotiation. It's not getting the other person to do what we want. No, this is an agreement. Both parties have to have a, a, winning, part, a winning part in the transaction. We are interested in the same thing. I want to sell you my uh, bottled water and you need it. You have that need. Okay, let's get to the point in which that interest from both parties is going to create the win-win effect. I'm not getting all what I want from you if you get, uh, get to buy my water. Of course, you get something, a good bargain out of that transaction that led us to have both a good negotiation. Okay, so there are two types of negotiation, most common types of negotiation, which is the primitive and the effective negotiation. Primitive, as you can see, we have this guy from the, the age of the caverns and the primitive negotiation is that one in which we still deal with personalities, in which we are the queens of negotiation and nobody is going to tell us how to uh, present a good strategy because I have to win. Because um, 
there are personalities that they are so strong nowadays, it's so difficult to deal with them negotiation because they always want to win. That is out of, uh, out of use. Don't be like that anymore. Don't put your personal interest first in a negotiation. They gotta be at the same level of your client. They gotta be at the same level of the other person who you want to negotiate. Be open to different options. Look, rules, options, criteria, it's so broad that not only your option is the one that it's accurate, there is so many other ways to get to Rome. So be open, don't put no options anywhere. Um, the primitive negotiation also has a split criteria. It is a yes or it's a no, that's it. We cannot do with uh, grace. Don't be like that. You are closing the doors of such a great um, results of a, of a negotiation. You are a business that wants to get as far as you as you can. Don't close the door, letting people know that you are a person who cannot be uh, who um, cannot be negotiated with. Okay. An effective negotiation kind of kind of kind of on the same level of the effective communication. We know that there are different different styles of negotiation. We have to have a goal. There are standards and rules. Rules of what? Of your business. What is what you want? Yes, but it's not exactly um, as, a, as a rule that cannot be modified. Here, respect the rules of your business, but open the standard to comply with some others that at the end of the, the, the day, it's gonna create a good relationship. An effective negotiation is about relationships. It's the, the same thing, why do you go to networking? to create new relationships that probably tomorrow is gonna bring you a good, uh, um, an opportunity to negotiate. Maybe you are gonna sell something or maybe you're gonna buy something. Um, here in an effective negotiation, we take care of both parties, of the interest of both parties, not only yours, yours, not only their interest. Both parties have, are on the same level. And influence is very important here. Why? Because it's not only about what you want and the, the, the criteria of your business, but also you look around and you see around what is the new dispositions, what are the new rules, what is the custom? What is the use of uh, trades? You allow different things around to be an influence, a positive influence on your, uh, on your own business in order for you to be a better negotiator. Ethics is the study of morals and systems of morality or principles of conduct. It is related to the concepts of doing good or bad and what should be done or not in human decisions and actions. Why we're we gonna talk about ethics? Well, because what do we decide, what do we do, what we are planning to do, our intentions and our actions during a negotiation has to be completely with our personal moral, with what we are doing that it's gonna be um known as good or bad. So the more ethic person that you are during a negotiation is going to open your horizons to everybody to really want to have a business transactions with you. The role of the negotiator is at least passively deceive his opponent about his set point and at the same time Engage in an ethical behavior. Yes, you want to win. We know that. The other person as well. 
Yes, you have to set up your point. The other person is doing the same. So what is not what we are gonna do? Let's engage in an ethical behavior to get to the point where we agree. I have known, yes, a lot of people that is not ethic, ethical, that have great negotiations, that they are not ethical, but what happens? They can last a year, two, three, ten. Sooner or later, everything that has been done wrong, it fails. And you don't want that for your business. Not even if you are starting. You have to start for the right way. These are the four standards and tactics in business and negotiation. Uh, be aware that the ethical decisions, they have to be the final result. Don't go back and forth. If you know that you are acting with an ethical behavior, that is going to end in great results. Your rules and decisions got to be based on ethical rules. Don't be the wolf like that, that person that you see in this um, slide. Don't be that wolf behind the person trying to have like secret intentions. Let people to know you for, for what you really are, for your values, for what strategies has your business organization. Create that uh, program or the, the mission and vision and the core values of your business the best on ethic principles, ethics principles, that they are going to show that whoever has a commercial transaction with you is going to have a fair trade. Ethical and personal social contract is something very important nowadays. It is like social responsibility, personal social contract, ethics. All these terms nowadays may such a great, um, a, a, a great team on every single transaction, on every single step of your business. Why? Because they are showing that you really care, that you have values, and moreover, because the other person is going to trust you. They trust you that you are giving a fair trade. Do not show anything, anything that you are not. Batana is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. What is this about? Okay, so at the time that you are going to negotiate, negotiate, you have to know what is that that you want. You want to sell a product, okay? What is the maximum that you are going to sell it for? What is the minimum that you are going to accept? What are your strategies? Have you think about all the things that probably might happen to, during the negotiation? Do you know your product so well that you know that at the time that the other person is going to um, to lead his part of negotiation uh, at that time? Do you know your business and your product that well that you know how to contrast that, that, that um, not contrast, but how to answer to that? The best alternative to a negotiated agreement is basic on every business to have a great negotiation. You have to know how. You have to know when, you have to, to know what for. Are these strategies going to be used in your business to always get to the win-win? Nobody starts selling or providing a service without not knowing what they are doing. And remember, you might start having just one, two, three clients. What is going to happen if let's let's say that you are a masseuse and and then what is going to happen that um, you have a whole resort requiring your services and the services of your company and they want to negotiate to get to a, a good price. What is your button? What are those alternatives 
that they are going to allow you to have the best agreement in a negotiation. Before starting any negotiation, we have to put our, our feet on, on, um, on earth, on land. Why? Because if the objective is not worth it, please do not lose, lose time, money, and energy. We have to be realistic, okay? If the objective is worth it, go for it and try to set to set up your batuna and try to set up your strategies and try to do your best but if you really see that is not worth it why you're gonna be losing your time and your energy and please remember that if there is not benefit at all there is no good negotiation that you are going to obtain from it now, remember one thing. Somebody is uh, sometimes, and I've heard this a lot. We didn't reach a negotiation. Um, we did not uh, get to. Uh, it was a non non negotiability situation. That was not negotiable. That is not true. Everything is negotiable. What you lack of was of strategies. Everything can be sold. Everything can be bought. Everything can um, everything can be done through negotiation. You just have to have the good strategies. If you didn't reach a negotiation, having the knowledge that it was worth it is because you had a lack of strategies not because it was not negotiable okay i'm gonna give you three strategies to agree and negotiate first one always ask yourself this is kind of uh, like a pre-list before entering into a negotiation how much is the list I can accept? How much is the most? What is the condition of the other party? What um, have I asked what I need to know? Have I identified what they asked me or am I asking for? Have I recognized the current needs and have I valued my conflicts? These questions represent the first strategy. This is like the pre-negotiation questions. Once that you have responded to this in regards of a nego the negotiation that you are about to enter to, I, 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 um, I assure you that you are going to get a better result. During, please, avoid these mistakes number one not because it's your mom not because it's your your uh, boss not because it's your friend it means that you're gonna have a great negotiation a good relationship is not something that it's an assurance to have a good negotiation you have to be prepared like if it was a normal person anybody else but a family member you have to go ready for that remember that one thing is the family one thing is the friend our friends and another thing our business do not commingle them please do not improvise if you don't know what the other person is asking you don't improvise don't try to give a response that you don't have because what is going to happen is that the other person she might see or or, or uh, she might find out that you don't know nothing about it she's going to cut the conversation like this and there's no negotiation out of it do not commit to something that you cannot fulfill no how many times i've seen can you do this yes i can and the 
uh, there is like a um an advice right um don't don't say that you don't know you just say yes and you figure it out afterwards it doesn't help it doesn't works all the time so please if you really do not know if you can fulfill something do not commit to it don't be impatient don't get defensive it's not a matter of it's for right now or it's for tomorrow it was for yesterday no don't get impatient you have to understand that the other person is completely different than you the other company is different than you maybe they need more time maybe in regards of their cultural ways of commerce they are different have you deal with a japanese have you deal with um, another um another person uh, that has something completely a different culture than you every single person and business deals in commerce completely different don't get defensive don't get mad don't get personal remember that your emotions gotta be out of the door out of the zone of negotiation do not um avoid option analysis and please you have to know how to summarize and conclude your negotiation don't stop or don't end a negotiation with things like well um i don't know but i will let you know later it's okay but it's not correct okay how many times we don't know about a product about a service and it's okay not to improvise i said that but at the time that all the negotiation has happened and at the time that everything has to go to the final please you have to know how to summarize your services your product your business uh, if you're presenting a business plan how are you going to negotiate that with a bank that's about to give you a loan you have to know how to summarize your project you have to know how to conclude that what you have said is the best for a great negotiation. Finally, the third point, you have to have you have to be retrospective. Have a retrospective of yourself. Compare yourself with yourself. Stop comparing with others. That is not helping. You can be inspired by by others, yes, but don't compare yourself with others what is success what another person has or what is your personal definition of success you have to understand that even for this you have to make the comparison with yourself do not compare to others analyze your success and failures it's very important why how are we gonna learn if we don't fail, how are we gonna learn? This is not a recipe to be um, free of failure. Of course, there is gonna be failure. How are you gonna um, succeed from it? Learning from it, okay? As well, think about what do you expect from your negotiations? Yes, you expect to win, you expect to sell, you expect to grow but in fact what do you expect from it what is going to be helpful to you and your business be honest and express your real real possibilities yes we have to dream big we have to see ourselves like the cat on the mirror that sees a lion yes but we have to be honest with our possibilities okay remember it is okay to be inspired. It is okay to believe in ourselves, but it's okay to be honest with our possibilities at the same time as well. Closing with what is an effective business closure, what is going to show me that I have gone through all the process and that my business closure is effective? Number one, did you have an agreement or not? Are you still fighting about it or not? 
Is the other person convinced that you are the best business for 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 him to close the the, the business or not? What's the purpose of your negotiation? Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> achieve or not? Was it or not? It was fair. Was it durable? Did you consider your interest or not? Remember that that's important. It's not about letting go everything. You are important as well. You have to prepare your strategies. Remember that you want a long lasting negotiation, a long, I'm sorry, a long lasting relationship. Negotiation is the key for everything. Analyze your failures and learn from the mistakes. Remember to know your trading styles, your commercial styles, your negotiation st styles. Remember that the tone is very important. Remember that you have to prepare yourself. And do not forget about the strategies of the eye of the tiger because they are very important and they will help you a lot during any kind of negotiation. With that, I want to thank you for, for, for your um, for I uh, thank you for uh for for your attention and Jennifer, if Jenny, if there is anything else, yes, thank you, Maria, just for sharing your expertise and for taking the time for everybody today. It it really is great to kind of get a grasp on all of these different elements of business. It feels like coming to these sessions, it's like a mini business school that we're all able to get by being here. So thank you for putting all of this together. I wanted to remind everybody, post in the chat if you have something specific that, to ask Maria. It can be with regard to negotiation or anything else in the business realm. She deals with so much. Um, so if you have any questions on that, let let me know, post them there. And in the meantime, I'm going to ask my own questions. And I wanted to see, Maria, if you could speak on uh, just the idea that the business community is so small. And I think when you're getting started, there is that temptation. You talked about it in the beginning about ethical decisions. And there is even, even the most ethical people can succumb to the temptation because they want to get ahead in their business. They're trying to support their families, right? They're trying to put food on the table. They're trying to make a dream come alive. Can you speak about some of the consequences of doing that considering the, 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 how small the business community is and reputation? Of course, that is well known as the fast growing, the magical growing. Um, I'm not saying that it's not, it cannot happen in, in ethical ways. Yes, it can. But here, the most important thing is if you want to go through that door of not doing things with ethics, and getting to the point of what I need is money, what I need is food, what I need is to provide. Um, let me tell you that it's not gonna it, it's not gonna last for a long time, and that is going to damage your business, your image, as soon as 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 somebody knows about it. Trust me, if you want to be well known and start with the right with the right foot on business, business. Remember, it's a very very important important platform for everybody, not only for the entrepreneur that wants to create a business. You have no idea how many people have put all what they have, all their savings, everything that they have in life in a business. If you want to deal with that person having that business in a wrong way, not being ethic, be prepared for the, the worst. Here in the US, we have so many rules, so many laws protecting businesses, protecting, um, as I've said, uh, even conversations that they were not in writing and they weren't, were just oral, but they protect the creation of contracts. Why? Because if you are in business and if you want to, to, um, to grow, there are so many things that you have to, to take care of and ethics is the first of them. I know that temptation is it's a huge subject, believe me. Temptation could be 
something that uh, that you might think that is not gonna happen to you, but it's gonna happen to you. Sooner or later, it's gonna happen to you. And the right, the people want people want to do business with those that they trust and that they know that they care. So if they cannot trust you, if they know that you don't care about anything but you, don't expect to have that many clientele. Yeah, it's just such a good reminder uh, because it is, it can be very, very tempting. So it's good to just address it. Got a, a great question here asking for an example of a closing negotiation. So say you've been going back and forth, you're kind of at the end, and you want to close the deal. Can you give an example of some of the verbiage that might be involved? Um, okay, okay. Um, let's 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 put on a uh, hypothetical. Okay. So let's say that I I provide a service. I open LLCs. Okay. So this person comes and say, hey, I knew that you have your company. Uh, I, need, I need to open my LLC and I need you to uh, provide me three, four contracts as well. Okay, um, my part will be like, okay, these are the services that I provide and these are the contracts that I can have uh, give you. And so uh, they are well revised because, um, you know, as you know, I have legal uh, legal knowledge. So don't worry, they are gonna be uh, right for your business. The other person says, mm, well, I know that in another office, they are offering as well for a cheaper price, like another contract and also the creation of my social media. Well, we need to check what is the, the the quality or what is the warranty that the person providing the other contracts is giving you. Uh, I do not do social media. I only do the creation of businesses and contracts. But what I can assure you is that each contract is going to have as well a waiver of liability for you on um, that specific service. Um, Okay, so if you don't do social media, do you think that um, that you can do a better price because I do not have all the money to pay for that? Well, we can talk on a better price. I can do probably uh, instead of, let's say $500. Instead of $500, I can give it to you for 400 and you can pay me 200 now and 200 in two weeks, we can sign a contract for that. What do you think? Well, it sounds good. Um, I think that um, I get a better price. I get my contracts done with a legal expert. And also I know that my LLC is gonna be um, formally and well created. Okay, so do you agree with that? I think that we can, we can uh, set up a good business right here. Uh, yes. I think so. Okay, well, let me go ahead and bring the, the contract to sign. Things like that, you know? It was like my price, your price, my, uh, my offer, the other offer, what the other offer has, what I don't. I didn't talk bad about the other person. I didn't talk bad about the other business, but what I said, it was about what I can offer. I have this legal um, knowledge that enhances a little bit my offer. That's how you have to treat people in a negotiation and that it's ethic. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for running through that. I love a scenario so people can kind of think it through. The other thing I was thinking about was just how to stand firm when somebody, like let's say you're getting started and, and you've done the calculations, you've done your homework on the front end, you know this is what you have to charge for, for, for a certain product or service. And then somebody comes along and says, I know you're new. I'm not paying that, but I'll pay this lower price. How does a new business owner deal with that? Because they want to have clients. They want to have, you know, reviews and experience and stuff, but they also need to, you know, make money doing their business. Exactly. Well, remember that a part of my presentation said, 
if the negotiation is worth it, go for it. Yes. If it's not, don't deal with it. If it's gonna, if you're gonna lose time, money, and your effort and reputation, just don't do it. Don't do it. If this person wants in the same scenario, the same hypothetical that we talk about, if this person is telling me, you know what, I, I'll give you 200. Ouch. It's not even the, the, the 50% of my price that it was 500, right? So even if I am dying to sell or dying to close a negotiation, if it's not worth it, don't do it. Why? Because then you might be known as the person that charges $200 for an LLC constitution and three contracts, and you don't want that. Understood. Yes, understood. Be well, and, and then you're trying to go forward and charge your regular price, but everybody knows, well, this other person only paid this. And so I, I definitely understand what you're saying. Uh, if anybody has any last minute questions, post them in the chat. I've got a whole list of my own, but I wanted to make sure that I, you know, most importantly are the participants here. So I want to make sure anybody who's on today has their questions asked as we have about two more minutes here to chat. But I will say when it comes to business expenses and, th and, th and things that business owners, are, business owners are dealing with, are there certain things that are negotiable and certain things that are not? For example, I'm guessing when you go to file your LLC or something with the government, that's non-negotiable, um, but perhaps <laughs> other things, right? Uh, other, you know, products and, and things like that perhaps would be negotiable from, from business owner to business owner. Um. I think that that this is this is a good question, uh, Jenny, because you have to know your business, your product, or your service in order to think about what is negotiable. Define yourself what is negotiable negotiable in your business, because for me, maybe I don't know how much effort have you gone through in order to, to provide that service? There is, a, a, let me tell you something. There is a, like a short story that talks about um, 100 engineers that came to try to fix a, a, a wheel. The 100, all those 100 engineers, they failed. They didn't know. The 101, and they wanted to charge $50,000. The one oh the one hundred and one engineer, he said, I charge seventy five thousand dollars, and the owner said, Okay, that's too much. The other engineers they charge five thousand, fifty thousand. Well, I charge seventy five thousand, but I assure that your will is gonna be um, fixed. Okay, he went to uh, he got hired. He went and fixed the will, and the owner asked what did you do well i was the only one knowing which part had to be pushed that's it why because your knowledge is valuable every single part of your business your product or, or your service you are the only one that knows it why it makes what it, it is special and it's completely different from others. And if you charge $50,000 for that, go ahead, because it's worth it. Don't let people to put the price on the things that you, um, that you only know how much are they. It's the same thing with professions. Why do you think that attorneys uh, charge that much? Why do you think that, that um, an accountant charge that much? Let's talk about um, about uh, another kind of jobs. Why do you think that the mechanic is charging you that? Because he know uh, what to press, you know? So don't let nobody to leave the value of your business and your products. That is it's a wonderful way to wrap up. It's three o'clock now, but a really good question just came in asking if you happen to have any good recommendations on business negotiation, ethics, that sort of thing. Kind of um, kind of, I know. <laughs> Could be like a book. Yes, a book. Okay, so there is a book that um, it is called "How to Get to a Yes." 
that's the name of the book. Um, the author, I'm sorry, I don't remember at this time. I feel a little bit pressured because it's three o'clock, but that's the name of the book and it's wonderful. If you want to know how to bargain, how to get to the best negotiation, I um, I think that's a, bit, a, a really good book to read. Thank you, Maria, for sharing your expertise. How to get a yes is the book. I typed it in the chat if you want to copy it and Google it and you can find it yourselves. Um, just really a treasure to be able to be with all of you this afternoon. I love coming for these events for Sarah and, and learning right along with the rest of the participants. So if you want to watch the replay of this and all of the other sessions, go to Sarah's YouTube channel and it will all be there. And I look forward to seeing you all next week same time same place same place and have a wonderful week we'll talk to you soon everybody bye bye